The University of Manchester has been at the forefront of development studies for the last 60 years. Today, the Global Development Institute leads Manchester's teaching, research and impact on development. What's now Europe's largest teaching and research institute, focused on poverty and inequality, has taken very different forms over the years. GDI started as a small unit on the edge of the university. We were not even a formal part of the university. Academics at the University of Manchester were researching on international development before development studies was recognised as an academic discipline. At the University of Manchester, Arthur Lewis was made Britain's first black professor in the late 1940s. Indeed, his research helped to establish the field of development economics, and it led to him being awarded the Nobel Prize for Economics. The economists, the sociologists and the political scientists at Manchester were looking at the changes in the former colonies. The Foreign Office approached Arthur Livingstone, who was a senior lecturer in social policy here, to mount training programmes for civil servants from Southeast Asia. In 1958, the Department of Overseas Administration was established and began to run short training courses in public administration for civil servants from former colonies. The department was largely run by former British colonial administrators. In its first 10 years, students from 47 different countries studied at the department. These courses were immensely popular, however they provided no formal qualifications. And so in the mid-1970s, a postgraduate diploma in development administration was first offered. Development studies began to emerge as a specific discipline. The Development Studies Association was set up in 1978 and that created an annual forum at which people came together to share their findings and to select the priority questions for the future. Throughout the 1980s, successive governments cut funding for university short courses in development and some very well established centres ceased operating as a result. However, the University of Manchester was able to adapt by expanding its master's courses in international development, and this included the flagship master's programme in development administration and management. In 1986, the Department of Administrative Studies was renamed the Institute for Development Policy and Management, or IDPM, establishing a PhD programme alongside its master's courses. When the British Council moved to Manchester, there was a new influx of people concerned with development issues and with whom we established strong connections. The department expanded. Our academics at Manchester got involved in working on the design and management of projects in developing countries. Staff began to increasingly work with donors, with NGOs uh, and with development agencies. And this helped to make the work more practical and applied as well as being theoretical. Throughout the sector, development was becoming increasingly professionalised with a huge expansion in NGO activity, the creation of the Government Department for International Development and the Millennium Development Goals. This shift was mirrored in universities by a move away from short course training primarily for development practitioners towards more formal academic qualifications and research. During the 1990s, the academic profile of IDPM rose rapidly as staff produced groundbreaking research on structural adjustment, microfinance and the rise of NGOs. At the start of the 21st century, the government's Department for International Development began to fund large research centres and the Chronic Poverty Research Centre was established at Manchester in 2001. IDPM increasingly shifted. Rather than simply responding to the AIDS agenda and reacting to external development priorities, researchers actively critiqued influenced and shaped them. At the same time, a focus on practical ways to reduce poverty was retained, with the Brooks World Poverty Institute, BWPI, established in 2005 with the support of the Rory and Elizabeth Brooks Foundation. There's an enormous satisfaction to be derived from supporting poverty research. My wife and I have been to a number of local communities in distant countries where the policies that are being implemented there are improving the outcomes of people's lives. And those policies have been derived from the research and knowledge that have been generated at the University of Manchester. 
BWPI pushed forward thinking and practice on chronic poverty, social assistance, supply chains, and the politics of development. With Nobel Prize winner Joseph Stiglitz chairing the new institute, development studies at Manchester became increasingly influential on the international stage. The Brookswell Poverty Institute retained close links with IDPM through a complementary research agenda, and both institutes were located here within the new Arthur Lewis building. In 2016, IDPM and BWPI joined forces to become the Global Development Institute, GDI, that acknowledged the rapidly shifting landscape of development. Distinctions between rich and poor, global north and global south were becoming increasingly blurred. GDI wanted to reflect new dynamics and patterns of inequality, trade and migration. The Global Development Institute now has a critical mass of over 45 academic staff, nearly 100 PhD candidates and over 400 master's students. We are now central to the university's ambition to be relevant beyond the UK, beyond the Global North. From being a small training unit on the edge of the university, the Global Development Institute now leads one of its major research beacons on global inequalities. Over the last 60 years, development studies and the broader field of global development has shifted, and the University of Manchester has been central in shaping these changes. I've been working in the Development Studies Institutes and now the Global Development Institute at Manchester for uh, just over 30 years, and uh, it's certainly been something that I've been very proud of and pleased with. Child mortality has dropped, maternal mortality has dropped, incomes have gone up, people get much better education than they did. It's quite good to look back and realise that although there are many problems, the scale of those problems is not on the scale it was 40 or 50 years ago. We're now really excited about further developing our teaching and our research agenda and working towards ensuring greater equity and social justice into the future. <laughs>